Fortunately, I left the United States way before everything kind of went to shut down. And so I'm now in my hometown in Kuwait. Uh, so that's in the Middle East. We're kind of known as being Iraq's neighbors. I mean, things start slow, but uh, just like this pandemic, everything just moves so fast. So now, yeah, now it's just taking it day by day. So when I went back, it was just, it was just, it was just, it was just another Monday, you know, it was just a normal work day. Um, Things just got bad like a couple of weeks after I got back. So I kind of was ahead of the curve by a couple of weeks, not, not by that much. Just three, maybe four weeks after I came back, the airports went to lockdown. I, I was supposed to be in the United States right now to begin process on the production of a movie, which I wrote. So I wanted to go back to be with my family for a couple of weeks. Um, and I was going to go back to the United States in mid February or just early March. I grew up in Kuwait. Um, it's a pretty small community, pretty small country. So everything you do and everything you don't do is shared by so many. And you just live in these big households your entire life and just yeah, just live in those streets, playing those streets as you grow up. And um, I spent my younger days playing video games, and that's how I learned English. A lot of people are like, um, why well, I, I did have these motivations to go to the United States, whatever. But honestly, I, did, I just wanted to go to the United States. Um, uh, they don't call it the American dream for nothing, you know? A lot of people have that. And education was one, one way for it. Yeah, so screenwriting just came, it, it, it just came out of, out of the blue, you know? We did have a lot of downtime between classes, and that's where I kind of picked up writing. I don't know, it was just, it was just like a dominoes effect. I mean, one, one thing led to another, and now a couple of years later, I got, I'm writing a movie. It's called Haram, which um, means forbidden in English. Um, it's basically a character-driven drama about this Muslim family who live in the poor parts of Brooklyn and how their oldest girl is kind of discovering her own sexualities and her own deviancy along the path of, being, of living under this religious household and the turmoil that kind of that she faces with accepting herself and isolating her family. I'm just, I'm just thankful that a lot of people saw the story, they liked it, and it won a screenwriting contest, and that kind of landed me um, a movie production deal. Production is definitely gonna resume. Um, I'm still talking to the producers. We're definitely using this time for the benefit of the script instead of just wasting the time. So yeah, I, I can't really complain there. And yeah, I do feel bitter. I do feel sad. I'm very, very heartbroken for landing something that people just dream of. And then you just have to put it on hold. But I can't really compare it to other people because they, have, they are suffering much, much worse. So I'm just, I'm just being thankful and grateful. And even though there's a stop point that I've been put on my schedule, um, a lot of people have been under severe distress and much more damage because of this pandemic. So I'm still very thankful. Honestly, <laughs> Kuwait has been really great in dealing with this situation. They did curfew hours, they did quarantine hours way before a lot of other countries did. Um, even back then, we, all, when we had like two or three cases, they just started enforcing quarantine and curfew hours. Um, they started allocating like resources. They're building temporary hospitals for the people who are coming from outside, just so they don't, you know, mix with other patients. So they're doing a lot of a lot of good effort, which I personally did not think we we're going to be at that point. But yeah, they just I'm just very happy and I'm very like proud of being proven wrong, you know.
curfew and quarantine hours are just enforced by law now. So 5 p.m. until 4 a.m. So that's curfew. So that's where you got to be locked in. There are some certain jobs where they give you barcodes so you can just go out at night during curfew hours. Um, so whatever you stop, you just show them the barcode and then it's going to show your access and your um, you know, your passcode to just go on. A lot of shops, a lot of businesses have been closed down. So it just highlighted so many things and so many flaws within, and I'm just speaking about my country. I'm not speaking about the United States because I wasn't there during the time. Kuwait is such a small community. So, and the, during these times, it's this whole mess has shown that when times were really needed, um, a lot of people stood up. And I'm not talking about other countries again, I'm talking about Kuwait. So many people have just stood up. So many people have just volunteered. So many people have went out in the streets. So many people did this and that. Once you, you know, hold hands, once you really fight together, everything else is just, is just diminished. And you just take it a step by step, day by day. Stay safe.